Good evening, everyone. We begin tonight with what could very well be the beginning of a civil war in Washington as U.S. intelligence agencies have been caught red-handed attempting to blackmail the future president of the United States, Donald J. Trump, who yesterday launched an all-out attack on the press in his news conference where he called CNN fake news and had this to say about where the leaks are coming from. And I'll give you a hint, they're not coming out of Russia. Information that was false and fake and never happened got released to the public. It's a disgrace what took place. It's a disgrace. And I think they ought to apologize sure. to start with. Attacking our news organization. Your organization. Can you give us a chance Let's to ask go. a question, sir? Go ahead. Sir, can Quiet. you state, can, Quiet. Mr. President-elect, can she's, you state she's categorically? She's asking a question. Don't Mr. be rude. President-elect, can you give us a question? Don't be rude. You're attacking us. Can you give us a question? Don't be rude. No, I'm not going to give you a question. I'm not going to give you a question. Can you state categorically? You are fake news. Sir. Do you trust your U.S. intelligence officials? And what do you say to foreign policy experts who say you're actually weakening national security by waging this war of words against that community? Intelligence agencies are vital and very, very important. We are going to be putting in, as you know, Mr. Pompeo and others, you know the senator, Dan Coats, we're going to be putting in some outstanding people. Within 90 days, they're going to be coming back to me with a major report on hacking. I want them to cover this situation. I also want them, however, to cover maybe most importantly, because we're hacked by everybody. That includes Russia and China and everybody. Go ahead, go ahead. Mr. President-elect, uh, you said um, just now that you believe that Russia indeed was responsible for the hacking of the DNC and John Podesta's emails, etc. Oh, right. Did, but you know what? Could have been others also. But why did you spend weeks undermining the U.S. intelligence community before simply getting the facts and then making a public statement? Well, I think it's pretty sad when intelligence reports get leaked out to the press. I think it's pretty sad. First of all, it's illegal. You know, these are, these are classified and certified meetings and reports. And I'll tell you what does happen. I have many meetings with intelligence, and every time I meet, people are reading about it. Somebody's leaking it out. That's right, and Donald Trump has every reason not to trust the CIA and other U.S. intelligence agencies. And don't forget, it was just a couple of months ago where Democrat minority leader Harry Reid said publicly that the CIA should give Donald Trump fake intelligence briefings. I told, I said publicly, give him fake briefings. Pretend you're briefing. Don't tell him anything that you don't want to get out. Uh, and that's how I feel about it. I think that the man is a loose cannon. I think he's done so much to hurt our country with our international relations already. But as a Republican nominee, isn't he entitled to get those briefings? Give him fake briefings. What does that even mean? It means they'll tell him stuff. He won't know the difference. You're basically telling the intelligence community to lie to him. Now, you think that's bad. Wait until you see this. Last week, Senator Chuck Schumer was on the Rachel Maddow show, and I thought this looked like a threat. Chuck Schumer delivered a message to Donald Trump from the CIA. But he's, he's taking these shots, this antagonism, yep. this taunting to the intelligence Let me tell community. You, you take on the intelligence community, they have six ways from Sunday at getting back at you. So even for a practical, supposedly hard-nosed businessman, he's being really dumb to do this. What do you think the intelligence community would do if they were motivated I don't know, to? but I, from what I am told, they are very upset with how he has treated them and talked about them. That sure sounded like a threat to me. And you know, the day after those comments by Chuck Schumer, there was a Senate hearing that was supposed to prove once and for all that the Russians indeed hacked the DNC in order to help Donald Trump win the election. But the Senate hearings, they didn't prove a damn thing. What we did learn was that it wasn't even the CIA who officially released the information to begin with. No, it was supposedly Anonymous sources within the CIA who told the Washington Post, the New York Times, that the Russians hacked the DNC and they provided WikiLeaks with the emails. And this, of course, is something that Julian Assange of WikiLeaks has denied from the very beginning. But we're supposed to believe the Washington Post. We're supposed to believe the New York Times and the rest of the liberal media who has been regurgitating these talking points. That it was anonymous sources within the CIA. Yeah, right. Now, I thought this was interesting. Check out what White House Press Secretary Josh Earnest had to say when he was asked where specifically the intelligence reports came from. Quick other question. Um, so as far as the Russian hacks go, I know yeah. normally you can't discuss you know, sources and methods and how you guys are getting intelligence, but can you at least characterize um, the sort of intelligence that's coming in that proves that this was a Russian hack? Is it digital fingerprints that you're tracing back to a computer in Russian possession? Is it 
uh, human sourcing that you're intercepting phone calls and, and hearing Russians talk about this kind of thing? Yeah. Or where, where's yeah. the confidence coming from? Well, I'm, I'm obviously uh, quite limited in, in what I can say from here, but I, I think there are a couple of things that I can point to that I think um, uh, that, I, that I think answer the questions that you've raised. It's, it's essentially two. The first is the statement that was issued by the intelligence community in October of 2016, before the election, making clear that Russia was interfering in our election, represented the consensus view of 17 different intelligence agencies. That's not usually the way intelligence works. That kind of unanimity of opinion, particularly when the stakes are so high, is notable. So the official White House response is that there are 17 U.S. intelligence agencies who are unified in their belief that it was the Russians who hacked the DNC to help Donald Trump win the election. And I got to thinking, you know, that, that sounds really familiar. Don't forget, let's, we could take a look back at the run-up to the Iraq war when Colin Powell gave his U.N. address where he said that there were 16 U.S. intelligence agencies who were unified in their belief that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. If we had known the intelligence was wrong, yeah. we would not have gone into Iraq. But the intelligence community, all 16 agencies, assured us that it was right. Uh, my speech at the UN was based on that information. Every statement I make today is backed up by sources, solid sources. These are not assertions. What we're giving you are facts and conclusions based on solid intelligence. So there you go. The more things change, the more they stay the same. That was then, and this is now. Once again, Donald Trump has every reason not to trust the CIA. The CIA is a rogue agency. They have lied to us before. I mean, they have a long history of lying to the American public. They have operatives working within the mainstream media. We all know that. Those of you who don't believe it, Google search Operation Mockingbird. The CIA has lied to the people from way back to Vietnam, to JFK. They lied to us about the terrorist attack on Cubana Flight 455, Operation Gladio, drug trafficking in the U.S. They lied to us about Benghazi, 9-11, the 28 pages, you name it. And now they are out to destroy Donald Trump, who is a direct threat to the entire establishment. Former NSA technical director William Benny joins us now. And sir, I wanted to ask you, I wanted to get your take on the official White House response that there are 17 U.S. intelligence agencies who are unified in their belief that it was the Russians who hacked the DNC in favor of Donald Trump to win the election. Do you buy it or, or does this remind you, you know, the first thing I thought of was Colin Powell in his U.N. address, he said there were 16 U.S. intelligence agencies who said Hus Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. Does it sound familiar? Yeah, it also sounds familiar, just like the Tonkin Gulf affair that yeah. didn't happen. Yeah. I mean, uh, but I mean, the first thing that the first clue I had by by uh, seeing what they were saying was that they, they, they judged with high confidence. Now, what that means is they have no uh, uh, empirical evidence to show a trail directly to them. So they're just guessing at the end. I well, mean, and, and then the mainstream media, just right on cue, they regurgitate all the talking points. And what the simply, you know, we saw the Senate hearings that didn't prove a damn thing. And, and all they've got is the New York Times and the Washington Post who had anonymous sources from the CIA that told them that it was the Russians that hacked the DNC. Uh, yes. And, uh, and, and the, uh, <clears throat> the other point is that hacking is not the issue. The, the real issue is who gave the data to WikiLeaks? That's right. I mean, I'm sure the, you know, the, I'm sure the Russians hacked everybody. I mean, certainly they would go after Hillary Clinton because she's the Secretary of State. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, she was a target, just like all Secretaries of State of all the countries are targets. So, I'm sure they did it. I'm sure the Israelis did it. I'm sure the British did it. I'm sure the Germans did it. I'm sure any number of countries, certainly the Iranians, the uh, North <clears throat> North Koreans, you know, I'm sure all of them did it. So, so the question really becomes, who passed them after they hacked them and got them? Who passed them to? WikiLeaks, if in fact that's the way that that happened. Craig, Craig uh, Murray, a, a former UK diplomat, said that he passed the data to WikiLeaks by, from someone in, 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 he met in American University in Washington, D.C., who was basically a disgruntled employee of the DNC. And that's the sources we're hearing as well. This is all coming from disgruntled employees within the U.S. intelligence community. And Julian Assange from WikiLeaks, he said from the very beginning that it did not come from Russia. That's correct. Yeah. And, and now, and, and I was wondering, you, you've been with the NSA, you were with the NSA for 36 years, and you know what it's like when the U.S. government gets boxed into a corner. 
Donald Trump is a direct threat to the establishment. Does that mean the establishment is a direct threat to Donald Trump? Could his life be in danger? Uh, well, I, I, don't, I don't know if they'd go that far, but certainly they'll try to undermine him any way they can. I mean, that's the way they operate. Yeah. Well, I mean, even Senator Schumer has uh, warned him about that. Yeah, I played that clip earlier, and it, it sounded like a, a direct threat from the CIA. He's passing on the message. Senator Rand Paul said whoever is behind the leaks should be prosecuted and should be thrown in jail because this is blackmailing the future president of the United States. Am I right? Well, yes, but you have to remember, we, with our Department of Just Us, <laughs> they, they, it, it depends on who it is, right? If it's uh, Hillary, anybody associated with them, or you know, if, it's, if, if it's people who are in the intelligence community that are too important or too high up to, to prosecute, like Petraeus or something like that, then, then they, they fall into the group of us and they don't get prosecuted. Well, you know, Donald Trump has always talked about draining the swamp. Do you think he's going to be capable of draining the swamp of the U.S. intelligence agencies? There's a lot of work uh, to do. Yeah, that's really going to be tough, but he's got to, and it's really going to be a big job. But he, you know, he's got to have the right people in there who want, who are quite willing to, uh, you know, hit everybody hard and uh, take them out and get rid of them if they're in the way. Uh, that's really what the problem is. It's basically, I think, about the top four levels of management of all these intelligence agencies. I mean, they, their whole system is built on lies. They lie to Congress. They lie to the public. They lie to each other, you know, so it's all built on lies. Dan Coates, he's the new nominated director of national intelligence. And, and see, I think he needs to bring in outsiders and investigate just how corrupt and dishonest that, the, you know, the se we're talking senior levels of the U.S. intelligence agencies. Yes, Is that a, fact, that's a good place to start. Yeah, in fact, we had uh, filed a complaint against the corruption, fraud, waste, and abuse just at NSA. And that's documented in the DODIG report on the thin thread trailblazer program. And they kept that under wraps and hidden from everybody for, uh, you know, over a decade. Wow. All right. We're almost out of time. The inauguration is next week. Do you think there's going to be any more surprises, any more blackmailing? What can we expect from the U.S. intelligence agency against Donald Trump before the inauguration? Well, I don't I don't, I don't know that they would uh, I mean, they've been caught basically uh, or been implicated in a lot of uh, false news things and things like that. So who's going to believe anything that comes out now? No one in the public, you can't believe anything is coming out in public. Certainly the mainstream media has no clue except to regurgitate what they're told. They don't do any investigative reporting anymore. So, you know, they're not going to get any, any truth from them anymore either. Well, and I think that's the good news is the American people are, are not buying it anymore. And thanks to people, even like our new president, Donald Trump, he bypasses the media. He goes straight to independent media and social media. So I think that's the good news. And I think that's the way we'll learn about the truth in the future. I believe that's right. Yeah. All right, Wayne Benny, thanks for joining us. It's good to have you on our side. Well, thanks for having me, too. All right. The criminal multinational elements that have hijacked our republic are in full panic mode. Donald J. Trump has led the American people in the first stages of restoring our republic. Now they're launching the bizarre conspiracy theory with no proof, claiming the Trump and his legions of supporters are either Russian agents or their dupes. While the trillion pound elephant in the living room is the fact that Hillary Clinton publicly got illegal money from the communist Chinese, Saudi Arabia, and scores of other nations directly to super PACs and her campaign, not to mention her admittedly illegal foundation. It was Hillary that got $35 million to hand over our uranium to Russia, not Donald Trump. That's why it's imperative that President-elect Trump get on the offense now with the truth that it's Hillary, the Democrats, and the MSM that are in league with the foreign powers of globalism to bring our country down and destroy our sovereignty. They have done in spades what they accuse Donald J. Trump of. Good evening, everyone. We begin tonight with what could very well be the beginning of a civil war in Washington as U.S. intelligence agencies have been caught red-handed attempting to blackmail the future president of the United States, Donald J. Trump, who yesterday launched an all-out attack on the press in his news conference where he called CNN fake news and had this to say about where the leaks are coming from. And I'll give you a hint. They're not coming out of Russia. Information that was false and fake and never happened got released to the public. It's a disgrace what took place. It's a disgrace. And I think they ought to apologize to start with. 
attacking our news organization. Your organization. Can you give us a chance to ask a question, sir? Go ahead. Sir, can you state, quiet. Mr. President elect, go ahead. Can you say categorically? She's asking a question. Don't be rude. Mr. President elect, can you give us a question? Don't be rude. You're attacking us. Can you give us a question? Don't be rude. I'm not going to give you a question. I'm not going to give you a question. Can you state categorically? You are fake news. Sir. Do you trust your U.S. intelligence officials? And what do you say to foreign policy experts who say you're actually weakening national security by waging this war of words against that community? Intelligence agencies are vital and very, very important. We are going to be putting in, as you know, Mr. Pompeo and others, you know the senator, Dan Coats, we're going to be putting in some outstanding people. Within 90 days, they're going to be coming back to me with a major report on hacking. I want them to cover this situation. I also want them, however, to cover maybe most importantly, because we're hacked by everybody. That includes Russia and China and everybody. Go ahead, go ahead. Mr. President-elect, uh, you said um, just now that you believe that Russia indeed was responsible for the hacking of the DNC and John Podesta's emails, etc. Oh, right. did, but you know what? Could have been others also. But why did you spend weeks undermining the U.S. intelligence community before simply getting the facts and then